welcome back to 10 Feet Away from Ben Gray. I am your host, Ben Gray. Uh, based on lots of listener and watcher feedback, we've decided to improve my wardrobe. I'm wearing a t suit and tie now. Um, chances are next week I'll be in flip-flops and no shirt, so make sure you tune in for that. Joining us today is Reverend Amy O'Neill Aminette. I got the whole name on that one. That's impressive. That was pretty uh -huh. impressive. It's because of the banner in your office. I was able to know the middle name. Okay. So, which was your maiden name. Maiden name. name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So today we're still in James. We're jumping ahead a little bit, though. We are all the way in James chapter 2 now, starting in <laughs> verse 1. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are explo exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So, Pastor Amy, my first question for you <coughs> on the topic of favoritism, which of your children is your favorite? <laughs> That's my answer, too. <laughs> Easily, oh, and they actually yes. they all know, they know that it too. Uh -huh. yes. When there's such a clear front runner, <laughs> it doesn't need to be that whole, you know, oh I love all my children equally. No, it's clearly <laughs> first actual question for you. The examples of favoritism that are here in James are specifically about showing favoritism to the wealthy over the poor. My question is, is it sinful to show favoritism on other grounds, such as religion or gender or based on behavior. Is favoritism generally bad or is it specifically related to wealth and being poor? Where I get stuck on that question is the word sinful. I think it's really misinterpreted, the mm. word sinful, uh, because we tie that so much with salvation. And so I want to se separate that out uh, from, from the idea that showing favoritism somehow helps makes means that we won't continue to receive God's grace. Mm. Uh, that being said, favoritism is not a good idea. I think, I think that God wants us to see each other the way God sees us. Uh, your success level, your uh, socioeconomic status, um, all of those kind of human um, identity mm -hmm. uh, functions uh, those are those are not of God. Those are things that humanity has made uh, and ways for us to divide each other. Hmm. And so I think really what it comes down to is as easy as we are to see one another the way God sees us right. as beloved. Now, James also talks about judgment and, and mm -hmm. that this is not, it's not our place to judge others, especially mm -hmm. judging others without mercy mm -hmm. is what he concludes with. Mm -hmm. um, where does that leave the role and responsibility of, of a society to create laws mm -hmm. and uphold those laws mm -hmm. and to punish those who don't follow those laws. Mm -hmm. I think uh, judgment and mercy are different than law. And I think that we have to go back to the very, the, the original intention for law and it's to be able to create good order within a human community. Luther talks about the law as, and this is my favorite illustration of the law, as uh, similar to the curb on the side of a road. So if you're driving down a road and you start going off the path or you start veering off the direction you're supposed to be going, right? Or maybe we would say going in a, a direction that you're called to go mm. um, and you start veering off and you hit the curb and the curb pushes you back onto that path that you're supposed to be on. 
that's the law. It pushes you back hmm. onto kind of that right, that right path that, that you're called to be on or that we're supposed to be on even. I think we hear that word law and, and we think in the negative, but rather I think the intention of it is more positive than we always understand. And James says that specifically. He, he uses the phrase, the law that gives freedom. Mm -hmm. When I think of law, though, I think of restrictions, what I can and cannot do. Sure. More specifically, especially in Scripture, the things that I'm not allowed to do. I mean, the sure. Ten Commandments are, you know, you have things that are encouraging you to honor your father and mother. But there's also the restrictions. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, yeah. don't steal. But aren't you glad that people aren't supposed to murder you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Or steal from you. Or steal from me, exactly. Yeah. Or for my wife to commit adultery. Exactly. You know, are, yes, exactly. I'm grateful right. so, for laws. And like you smiled. <laughs> yes. You smiled when you heard that. Right? Yes. I mean, I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. The law is a good thing. When we think about it in terms like that, and not so much just of our own self, but rather the fact that it keeps the entire society in order. Well, and I mean, I can see I'm very grateful <clears throat> that we don't face the same consequences mm -hmm. as what are detailed in the Old Testament mm -hmm. for violating the mm -hmm. law. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not good at resting during the entire Sabbath. I'm really bad at it, in right. fact. Right. Um, and if my punishment was death mm -hmm. for not resting on the Sabbath, right. I would have died a long time ago. Right. So right. I'm very grateful that we don't. I'm very grateful <clears throat> that we do have that grace. And we see throughout, as you said, we see throughout mm -hmm. all of God's salvation story, mm -hmm. including the Old Testament, but of, again, of go back providing to, that grace. Right. I mean, just again, go back to like, what is the point of resting on the Sabbath? Yeah. It's not just about like abiding by this law, but it's understanding where this law comes from mm. and why it was written. And it was to provide respite. It mm. was provide space for people to glorify God, to worship, to join together as a community. Mm. You know, and so, so it's, it might be, I mean, this isn't just what we consider sleeping in, right? <laughs> sure. This is, uh, I, I think that that's an important part as we, as we try and kind of discern law in our lives, uh, and to see the freedom that it gives. I think it's many times to go back to the original intent mm -hmm. of why it was written in the first place. Right. Verse 5 references Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And specifically what it says is, Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? Mm -hmm. So my question is, why are those who are poor in the eyes of the world blessed with a rich faith? What is it about poverty mm -hmm. that creates that space for yeah. a rich faith? Or even alternatively, what is it about wealth that is a hindrance sure. to a rich faith? I think it has to do with hope. I think it has to do with idols and distractions. When the world isn't, isn't coming through for you, when your success isn't coming through for you, when your um, financial well-being isn't coming through for you, when all those things that we depend upon to find maybe hope or find happiness or, or, comfort. Uh, or comfort, exactly, um, when those aren't coming through for you, then where do you look? Hmm. And so I think that there's, um, there's maybe some of that. Hmm. Um, I think that uh, I think there's, there's not as many distractions. How do you... Those of us, I'll speak about <clears throat> someone who is not poor, who's been mm -hmm. incredibly lucky to mm -hmm. have the resources that I have, mm -hmm. to have the wealth that I have. Yeah. How do I get past that barrier that wealth creates to sure. be able to have that rich faith, to right. not lean on my own resources for comfort and for hope and salvation, but to rely on God solely? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Well, I think Jesus says to give it away. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think Jesus. Because <laughs> <laughs> just like the rich young ruler. <laughs> right. No. Right. Let's look at plan B. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, so I think that, so I think, I think what he's saying when he says that is be generous. Mm. Don't make it your idol. Mm. Have it be something that is so meaningless to you that you're willing to give it. Just give, give it, away. it away. Yes. 
Um, so I think it's I think it's about being generous. This has been another week of 10 Feet Away from Ben Gray. Thank you so much to Pastor Amy for joining us this week. Please join us next week and don't forget to take a look at the questions included with this video for you to answer with yourself, with your family, with friends, uh, with strangers. If you are interested in giving away all of your personal uh, wealth and resources, you can go ahead and send it to Ben Gray at Holy Cross, 801 <laughs> East Geneva Road in Wheaton, Illinois. Thank you again to Pastor Amy. Have Thank a great you week. for having me. I would never want a student to come back 30 years from now and say, Pastor Amy said that if you don't do X, Y, Z, you're damned or you're, right. you know, yeah. I would never, I would never want that. To, and those are the things that would stick with someone. Oh, absolutely. I think that's. And, the, and creates the situation where someone would walk away from the church. Yes, because what good does the church do for you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, all it teaches you is that you're going to hell and there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Whereas the alternative <clears throat> truth to me is that you're going to heaven, there's nothing you can do about it. Exactly, <laughs> for sure, for sure.